Friends, Krista here. Thanks for stopping by Books and Jams. I thought I would bring you along on a little book shopping adventure today. I have cleared out some of my older books that were on Pango, maybe about 20 of them or so. And then I have a bunch of books that I had got from my mom's house as she's been cleaning stuff out. And so I'm going to Second and Charles to bring some books there and see what I might find. And then I also learned that another bookshop called the Book Exchange return or exchanges puzzles as well as books. So I'm not bringing any books to the Book Exchange because they really only take paperbacks. So we'll see what doesn't get taken from Second and Charles if I have any paperbacks. But I also thought I would bring some puzzles that I have completed and don't really need to do again. Some that I really love I'm keeping. Most of my bookish ones I'm keeping. These are just other ones that I found from yard sales and thrift sales and things and I'm going to take them to the book exchange. So it's a little bit of a drive. I'm going to the south side of the city today so I can go to both of those. Yeah, so let's just go book shopping and see what I might find. I'm not particularly looking for anything specific. It is a bit of a rainy day. I probably should have stayed in my cozy clothes at home and drank hot tea or something, but I just felt the need to get out and go exploring to two bookstores that I haven't been to in quite a while. I go often, I go more often to the Second and Charles that's on this side of the river, the north side of the river. It's actually on the west side of Richmond. That's the one I normally go to. Uh, so it has been quite a while since I've been to this one on the south side. So let's go book shopping. Well, that first store, Second and Charles, I spent way more time than I was planning to. The shelves were a mess, but I learned from the guy when I was getting my store credit that they had just redone the whole store in the last couple of days. So things are just a mess right now. And it's true, they were. So usually when I go in, I use my Goodreads want to read list. I sort it different ways and I look for those specific books. And it just was really nearly impossible because the alphabet, alphabet, they weren't alphabetized well and 
middle grade was in with adult books and nonfiction was mis mixed in. Historical and romance were interchanged, which is fine because sometimes historical do have the romance, but yeah, it just was hard to find stuff. So I picked up a lot that I wasn't necessarily looking for. And my bill, my total originally, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I have seven books and the bill originally was 50 two or something, but I had $24 in store credit, which is great. They also didn't take a bunch. And so I have a bag in my trunk for little free libraries, which is good. They didn't take some of my book of the month, which are newer releases. They didn't take like small, great things from Jodi Picot, but they also didn't take a lot of the books that my mom had given me to get rid of, which I kind of figured. So that's fine. So the prices were decent for sure. Um, just not quite as cheap as I normally find. And I didn't grab any middle grade this time. I normally get some middle grade, but the shelves were just such a mess that I just got frustrated. And they normally text me when they're done with my order. So I was spent way longer than I needed to in there because they never texted me and said that my order was done. So I went over and I was like, hey, I'm just wondering how much longer it's gonna take. He's like, oh, I had it done about half an hour after you dropped it off. I've just been in that store for an hour and a half. Uh, so anyways, we're moving on to bookstore number two. I have a limited amount of time because I have a game night at my church tonight and I really wanna go to that and I need to go home and make a veggie platter first. So I am going to stop at Crumble Cookie because their cookies this week sound delicious and it's the last day. There's one that's like an apple pie or something and it caramel apple or something and it just sounds so good. And now people are pulling up next to me so I'm gonna go to Crumble and then the other bookstore. Here we go. Hi. Oh man, it's gonna be hard to choose today. Okay, here's the damage. I had a hard time deciding. This is what brought me in, the apple crumble one. This dark chocolate was a must. And this peanut butter cookie with these um, muddy buddies or whatever you call them, puppy chow on the top was also a definite. This one was between the oatmeal cream pie, which is, you know those Little Debbie oatmeal cream pies? Oh my word, it looks so good. Or there was a mint, like a chocolate mint, but I already had one chocolate and I didn't want another chocolate. So I have an apple, kind of on an apple caramel cookie, chocolate, peanut butter focused, and oatmeal. So four different ones and I'm going to take a bite of this one right now as I head over to the other bookstore. Yum! Thank you, Crumble. This is going to be such a mess to eat, but I'm only taking one bite right now. Oh man. Mmm. That's delicious. That's so good. Oh my word, yum. <laughs> and the fresh apple pieces they put on right when you buy it gives it a bit of freshness, which is lovely. Mm, so good.
This is way better of a shopping experience than Second and Charles. First of all, it's organized so well. Every shelf has where it is alphabetically. It's so easy to find things. Even though they're laid horizontally, the stacks are not too high. It's fun to browse. And I just went through my Goodreads list and found a couple off of there. And there's no music playing. So it's peaceful. It's quiet. It feels like a library. I love it so much better than that experience I just had at Second and Charles. So how it works here is you can trade in books. Everything is half off cover price and then you can use store credit for half off of that so ultimately get things for 75 percent off so i'm just going to wander around a little bit more i have four books and two puzzles in my cart right now i'll show you later <laughs> but it's really big very nice this is not middle grade even though it's shelved down here and wouldn't you know i find another one i haven't seen mirror lake at all but i have cold clay which is book two and i just bought in phoenix and there's another copy of it here. Oh well. <laughs> so I forgot that that last bookstore was right near this little bookshop, um, like two minutes down the road. So I had to come and stop in this one as well. This is an independent bookstore. So not a used bookstore like the other two have been. This is all going to be new, but I'm sure I can find something. Let's go. There's something so nice about a small bookstore. I just was the last person in there. They close in about five minutes and I just chatted with the lady about books for 10 minutes, just talking about what we've read and what was good and what we liked. Oh man, gotta love an independent bookstore. Find your closest independent bookstore and get to know the booksellers. I highly recommend it because they're just wonderful. All right, time to go home, get ready for game night. Yay. All right, my friends, I've made it back home from my bookstore shopping adventure and need to show you all the things that I got today because there's quite a few. So I'm going to work backwards since that's what's on top. The last store that I went to was the little bookshop and it's so cute in there. I really enjoyed talking with the woman who owns the store and I got two middle grade books in there. One of them is the Clackety and I kind of bent the cover when I was bringing it into the house, sadly. This one is by Laura Senf. And this was recommended to me by uh, Jennifer, who came to meet us at the Poison Pen. And I didn't pick it up at the Poison Pen, but I did pick it up today. And I feel like that's going right onto my October TBR because look at that cover. Honestly, I don't know anything about this book. So let's just see. Some shadows are best left in the dark. Evie Von Rath lives in Blight Harbor, the seventh most haunted town in America, with her aunt Desdemona, the local paranormal expert. Des doesn't have many rules except one, stay out of the abandoned slaughterhouse at the edge of town. But when her aunt disappears into the building, Evie goes searching for her. And there she meets the Clackety, a creature who lives in the shadows and seams of the slaughterhouse. 
the clackety will help Evie get Des back for a price. I'm going to stop reading there. It seems like a perfect Halloween creepy middle grade. I don't enjoy horror or thrillers that are adult books, but I, I'm finding that I do enjoy them with middle grade because I know it's not going to get too, too bad. So I picked up this one and then I also picked up Nothing Else But Miracles by Kate Elpis. This is one of my anticipated reads this year. She is the same woman who wrote A Place to Hang the Moon, which I absolutely loved. And in this one, we follow a sibling group, which is a buzzword for me. And they live in New York City. And the mom has passed away or left. And the dad is a soldier in the war, I believe. World War II, maybe? Yeah, World War II in the, the last year of the war. So the dad is away at war. And, and the oldest kid, I believe, is... A teenager and there are three or four siblings I forget but they're kind of living in their apartment and they have this whole community of people that help them and are a support to them but they're living basically on their own but one day their building gets a new landlord their landlord that knew them has passed away or something and they have a new landlord and he is not thrilled about this group of siblings living there on their own so I've heard that it's very good I fully trust her writing based on A Place to Hang the Moon. So we'll see. I'm very, very hopeful for that one. The second store that I went to was the Book Exchange. And I showed you a couple clips from inside the store. It's pretty decently sized. Not quite as big as Second and Charles, but it just was so peaceful in there after what felt like a stressful trip to Second and Charles. Anyways, the book exchange didn't have any music playing. It was quiet. The ladies, I talked with them for a little bit. They're super nice in there. I was talking to them about my channel. And I will have all three bookstores linked down below. I know for sure the Little Bookshop has a bookshop.org. I'm not sure the book exchange does, but I know they have an Instagram. So I'll link their Instagram. And then Second and Charles is a chain. They're kind of multiple places. So they're a little bit all over. I guess. So I'm not sure how all over, but I'll see how I can link them into maybe just their Instagram. I picked up five books and three puzzles from Book Exchange. I think I spent $25 again. Each of the places I think I spent about $25. But so the first one I got, um, I actually picked up two books by Sharon Cameron. Amanda from On the Middle Shelf just recently read Bluebird and absolutely loved it. So I knew I had to get this one. And then they also had The Light in Hidden Places. So I picked up that one as well. Bluebird is just after World War II. So 1946 in Berlin and New York City, I believe. I'm really looking forward to that. And then The Light in Hidden Places does take place in 1943. So kind of near the end of the war, I guess. For four years, 16-year-old Stefania has been working for the Diamant family in their grocery store in Poland, singing her way into their lives and hearts. Oh, I love that. Okay, so I'm excited to try some Sharon Cameron. I did find one that was on my want to read list because it was organized so much better in there. So I picked up West with the Giraffes by Linda Rutledge. This one I had heard about quite a few different times from different places, but an emotional rousing novel inspired by the incredibly true story of two giraffes who made headlines and won the hearts of depression era America. I'm excited. I feel like I've heard good things about that one. I picked up two that are a little bit older. So D.E. Stevenson is the author of Miss Bungle's book, and which I absolutely love. And so I was looking to see just if they had any others. And they had this one, The Blue Sapphire. And this is going to be like a comedic romance. I'm excited. I loved this little quote from the top here. Surely you can sit on a seat for a few minutes without getting into conversation with a perfectly strange young man. Julia smiled. It isn't as easy as you seem to think. <laughs> um, so it's just going to be a funny romance set. I mean, and this was written in 1963. So it's a bit of a classic. I'm excited to read some more D.E. Stevenson. And then this one was recommended to me by one of my patrons quite a long time ago. And I had such a hard time finding it. My libraries don't carry it. I didn't, I wasn't able to find it on audio. So this is Custard Tarts and Broken Hearts, a cracking tale full of warmth and history <laughs> by Mary Gibson. And this is 1911 in England. Strikes and riots erupt countrywide as the shadow of the Great War looms over Europe. 
But in one small corner of London, a factory girl, Nellie Clark's wages are all that keep her young brother and sister from starvation. As the young women of Pierce Duff's custard factory watch their menfolk prepare to march off to war, Nellie is forced to make a difficult choice between the family who depend on her and the man she loves. So First World War, England. I feel like that should be pretty good as well. And then I got three puzzles. I'm excited about this one. This is a 500 piece puzzle. Murder Most Puzzling, The Missing Will. So there's a story that I have to read first and that's gonna help me put together the puzzle. And then the clues are in the puzzle to help me solve the mystery. That sounds so fun. The full puzzle image is a secret until you complete the jigsaw. So that's gonna be a little tricky. I've done it one other time, but I am excited about this one. And 500 up to 750 puzzles were only 250. And then I got half off of that. So this is basically $1.25. How can I say no? And then these two were thousand piece puzzles, which were $5, but I got half off of that. So I got them for 250. So we have this, just two fall scenes. I like Charles Wysocki as an artist. Like I like his puzzles. This one is just fall, feels very fall to me. And the same with this one. These are like the home homestead, hometown collection. And it has just some fall scenery there. I think that will be fun. It takes place in Lancaster. Ladies of Lancaster quilts on display. So that should be pretty as well. That's what I got from Book Exchange. And then the books that I chose from Second and Charles. So we have The Authenticity Project by Claire Pooley. The Word is Murder by Anthony Horowitz. This is the start of a series. And I'm really interested in getting into his mystery books. I've heard wonderful things about them. I'm not sure they're for me, but I'm going to try. Banned Bookshop of Maggie Banks by Shauna Robinson. I couldn't resist this when I read the description. Maggie is going to, is taking over a bookstore and everyone in town wants to keep it more like classics. And she's trying to update a little bit to help get it on its feet. And so she starts an underground book club. Yes, please. Rosaline Palmer Takes the Cake, a scrumptiously tender laugh out loud novel. Single mother Rosaline Palmer is determined to bake it until she makes it to the top of Britain's favorite feel good baking show. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. There's a new season of Great British Baking Show starting that has started on Netflix. So I'm excited to read that as well. The Children's Train by Viola Ardon is on my want to read list. Based on true events, heartbreaking tale of family hope and survival in Southern Italy post World War II. So another one that takes place right after the war. Unlikely Escape of Uriah Heep by H.G. Perry is about a man who has the ability to bring literary characters out of books and then they start causing trouble throughout the city and threatening to destroy the world. And then he learns that he's not the only one that has this ability. I love the cover and that description, short description, just sounded so fun to me. And finally, Authentically Izzy by Pepper Basham, a contemporary romance. In this one, we follow Izzy, whose dream is to open up her own bookstore. And then her matchmaking cousin sets her up on an online dating community. And then apparently she meets some interesting characters and also possibly Mr. Wright. So I feel like that should be fun. I am, I have dabbled in the online dating world. It has not been successful for me, clearly, but it should be a fun read. And that is it. 14 books and three puzzles means that it was a great day of shopping. <laughs> I hope that you enjoyed coming along with me on my little book shopping adventure. I got more than I was planning to when I left the house this morning, but I did unhaul a bunch and brought them to Second and Charles and got them off my shelves, got them off my pango got some store credit for quite a few of these things. And it was just a wonderful day to be out and about. But now I need to go prepare a veggie tray because I'm going to a game night tonight. <laughs> so I need to go get that ready. But thanks for, so much for watching. I would love to chat with you down below if you've read any of these books. Do you have any independent bookstores near you that you just absolutely love? Again, I will have the three stores that I went to today linked somehow in the description below. Hopefully you will be willing to check them out or check out your own independent bookstore as well. And that's it for me today. I can't wait to talk with you down below and in another video very soon. Bye!